Well, happy Wednesday, everybody. It's the middle of the week leading up to Easter. And again, I hope you're praying for Easter services and inviting people to come with you. Today in our devotion and our reading plan here at First Baptist Church in Rock Hill, we're in Luke's Gospel, chapter 18. And what grabbed my heart in this chapter is the connection between belief and obedience, between obedience and belief. It's like th- those two things are like two sides of the same coin. So one coin, heads and tails. So is belief and obedience. And and I see this in how Luke narrated this chapter. He, he put three stories, if you will, back to back to back that make this point very, very well. Um The first in verses 4 through 15 is the parable of the sower, we normally call it. Uh, I think it's really more about the the word and the soul as well as the sower. But in any case, the sower sows his seed, throws his seed, and it falls on four types of dirt, which depicts Jesus and believers sharing the word of God and God's truth, God's word falls on four types of hearts, four types of people, if you will, four different responses. And the first is the hardened ground, the birds eat the seed, uh, which represents Satan, he says in this passage, stealing the word from their heart. It doesn't take any root at all, just bounces off of them. The second is over on the side of the garden. There's a little bit of dirt, but no depth, no moisture. So the seed springs up, but it can't dig roots, so it dies. And that's the person who hears the gospel. They hear about Jesus, and wow, that sounds interesting. I like that. And maybe they respond a little bit, but there's no depth to them, and uh, they don't they don't last, he says, because temptation just, they, they give in to it. They're not, they're not going to resist hard time. They're not going to stay true to Jesus through hard times. They're not going to stay true to Jesus when temptation comes because they are so shallow. And then the third seed falls out there and tries to grow, and it grows some, but the weeds, the thorns grow with it, and it chokes out the fruit. You may have the, you may have the plant, but there's no produce, okay? There's no fruit. And Jesus said, that's like a lot of people. And I think it's like a lot of people who go to church. Yeah, I believe and I'm here and and, and all of that. But there's not a lot of evidence in their life. There's not a lot of fruit growth in their life because he said things choke it out like worry and uh, the pleasures of life he mentions here and and so on and uh, uh, persecution. They just don't bear fruit. And so there's a lot of people who go to church and claim to be a Christian, may or may not be, I'm going to leave that up to God, but they don't give much evidence of it because they give in to everything the world throws at them pretty much. They give in to temptation. They worry all the time. They're out there having so much fun the way, you know, the world says to have fun or having fun, you know, even in good ways, but it takes away from their worship, takes away from their service, takes away from their Bible reading and prayer, takes away from their spiritual growth. And then... Jesus talks about the fourth group that produces fruit. And what really grabbed my attention here uh, is in verse 15. The seed in the good soil that produces fruit, these are the ones, these are the people who have heard the word. Now listen to what Jesus said. They have heard the word, the word of God, in an honest and good heart in an honest and good heart, and hold it fast and bear fruit with perseverance. They stick, they grow. The difference is the condition of the heart. An honest and good heart. Jesus has their heart. Whereas the third one that doesn't produce fruit, fun and pleasure have their heart. The world has their heart. Worries have their heart. Jesus doesn't have their heart. Um the condition of the heart. So they hear the word, and because their heart is is right, they grow and produce fruit. So faith is joined with obedience, two sides of the same coin. And then next, in verses 16 through 18, Jesus talks about no one lights a light, a lamp, turns on a lamp, if you will, and hides it, puts it under a basket, covers it. You you leave it out in the open so that it lights the room. And he's saying that if you are mine, you are the light of the world, you don't hide it. You don't cover it up. You shine for Jesus. And after saying that in verse 18, he said, so because of that, take care 
how you listen. Take care how you listen. How do you listen to Jesus? How do you listen to God's word? Do you listen and obey or do you listen and it goes in one ear and out the other and you just go and do your own thing? You cover the light and you don't let it shine. As I said yesterday, Easter's coming up. One of the best opportunities we have to invite people to church. Are you letting your light shine this Easter week? Wow. And then we have the, the next story is, is Jesus is ministering. And we know from um, here and the other gospels that he's in a house and it's crowded. And his mother and brothers come to him. They can't get inside. So they send word inside that they want to see Jesus. And in this story, in verse 21, when Jesus hears that his mother and brothers are outside looking for him, he responds to the crowd by saying, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. He's saying, my family, my family are those who hear God's word and obey it. And so three stories here that Luke, in his writing this gospel, puts back to back to back from the teaching and life of Jesus, which illustrate that belief and obedience go hand in hand, and there is something inconsistent. There is something wrong when belief is not matched by obedience. Now, none of us are perfect. Each of us will have times when we disobey Christ, when we hear his word and don't do it. But someone with true belief is going to exhibit that in a lifestyle of consistently obeying Jesus. And a lifestyle that is inconsistent, that more often than not, that, that quite often disobeys, that lives in sin and, and is, is messed up by the pleasures of the world and on and on, should cause someone who says, I believe, but they live inconsistently, it should cause that person to honestly examine their heart. Is it an honest and good heart as Jesus talked about? Or are they simply going through the motions? You know, for many, many centuries, the curse of the church was people believing that religious religious ritual, participating in, in, in religious ritual, Lord's Supper, baptism, on and on, Just because they did the ritual, they were all right with God, whether they were obedient or not. Some still think like that. The more modern curse of the church is easy believism. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. I prayed that prayer. My life doesn't show it, but I'm saved. Easy believe. And both are seriously dangerous. There's no way to read God's word and not come away understanding that belief and obedience are two sides of the same coin. And if you have belief, it's going to show up pretty consistently in your life as somebody who obeys Jesus Christ. Do you need to examine your heart and your life? Are you inviting anybody to church this Easter Sunday? Are you letting your light shine? Are you letting God produce fruit in your life to His glory? pray you are. Hey, God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.